Now let's go through an example to make sure that you know how to solve a transportation problem from the very beginning to the very end using the transportation simplex method. So let's start. So let's start from step one, balancing the problem. If this is the example, the power curve formulation, and we see that this problem is already balanced, the total number of supply is exactly the same with the total number of demand. If it's not the case, then you need to adding either dummy demand or dummy supply point. In the second step, find a BFS using one of these three methods. Suppose we're using the Northwest corner method and this is the BFS that we've got. In step three, for all basic variables, you need to find the u and the v using the fact that u i sorry u1 equals 0 and u i plus v j equals c i j we are going to use the table so in step 3 using the fact that c hat i j equals 0 we may say that u i plus v j equals c i j without the hat Use this relation and start with writing down u1 equals 0. This is a must. And then from here, use the basic variables to find a v. Okay? Like in the previous video, you are going to do this using the clue from the basic variables to find the u's and the v's for all um, u1 up to u3 and v1 up to v4. So that's for step 3. Now in step 4, look at all the non-basic variables. So for all non-basic variables, check whether the CIJ hat, um, is there any of them is positive for money minimization case. And if yes, our BFS is not optimal yet, and pick one that is the most positive as the entering variable. So in this case, X32 or this cell will become our entering variable. Now we need to perform pivot. So go to the uh, pivot procedure. We know that the variable that should enter the basis and then we perform um, find the loop and so on until we get um, the entering and the leaving variable. So let's do this. So we know that x32 needs to become the entering variable. Create a loop. So we go there and then we go up. I don't go here because if you go there, then you cannot make any loop, right? So you go up, and go there. And then again, I don't go there because there's no way to make a loop. Either you go up, you go down, uh, there's no way to create a loop. So you go here and then you can close it and it becomes a loop. It's nice, right? And then label the cells even starting from the entry variable even odd even odd and then take the minimum of the values uh, among all the odd cells so the minimum is 10 now you subtract the values in the odd cells by 10 and increase the values of the even cells by 10 and now you see that now x32 becomes a basic variables and then here x33 um, three, three becomes a non-basic variables so we have got a new bfs now we go back to step three and then find the u and the v for all basic variables remember that u1 equals zero and then use the basic variables to find the u's and the v's and then check if um, for the non-basic variables, is there any of them having the C hat IJ positive? In this case, apparently X12 has the C IJ hat positive. You may want to verify this by yourself by really calculating the numbers to make sure that C hat 12 is positive. Same as before, repeat the pivoting procedure until you get the new um, BFS here. Now you see that um, x12 becomes a basic variable 
while x22 is a non-basic variable. Repeat step 3 again, find the u and the j starting with u1 equals 0, and then check for all non-basic variables, is there any of them is still positive, and pick the one with the most positive coefficient of c hat ij to become the entering variable. Create a loop again, and then perform the pivot thing to obtain a new BFS. Now for this BFS, um, make sure that, um, again, same as before, you calculate all the U's and the V uh, using all the basic variables, and then check for all non-basic variable, check whether all the C hat IJ is already less than or equal to zero. In this case, um, all non-basic variables already have got the C IJ hat less than or equal to zero. It means that this BFS is already optimal, and then the total cost is, you can calculate this, um, 10 items times 6, 25 items times the cost is 10, 45 items times the cost is 9, 5 times 13, 10 times 9, and 30 times 5. So the total cost of this solution, and it is optimal solution, is $120. So here are some questions to check your understanding. After we determine u1 equals 0, up to this step only, we may obtain v1 equals 8, v2 equals 6, v3 equals 10, and v4 equals 9. Is this statement true or false? There will be a pause on the video to give you the time to think about the answer of this question. The answer is false, because ui plus vj equals cij only applies for basic variables. So up to the step when you have only determined u1 equals 0, the only v that you may obtain is v1 equals 8. There's no way to determine v2, v3, and v4 up to this point. You may determine them after you get more information about um, U2 and U3. So if this is the entering variable, and then I create something like this, and this loop is wrong, because pick one of um, the statements that is true. Well, in the context of transportation simplex algorithm, this loop is wrong because it includes a non-basic variable. The only non-basic variable that you may include in the loop is the only entering variables. For the other ones that you include in the loop must be basic variables. So that is the reason why this loop is wrong in the context of transportation simplex algorithm. The last question, the values of ui and vj other than u1 itself, which is always equal to zero, pick one of the statements here that you think is correct. The correct answer is they can be positive, zero, or negative. We have not seen any u or v that is negative, but it is possible. Okay, so that's the end uh, for this week. Thank you for watching all the videos for this week and see you again next week. Thank you.